It's Friday, and that means Charlie James from WTMA. He joins us with this week's top talkers around the low country. Um, let's just get start straight to the biggest talker, and that is Roof, found guilty on all of his 33 charges. Every single count. I thought there, and a lot of my uh, listeners and callers this week thought there might have been a little bit of a hang-up over some of the hate crimes revolving religion or involving religion. That turned out not to be the case. The jury took very little time deliberating. They asked very few questions in this, but how many questions did you have? There were four key factors on this. First of all, the uh, confession video by Dylan Roof. Mm -hmm. Second of all, you had the, uh, the medical examiner's testimony. You had Polly Shepard's dramatic testimony, heart-wrenching uh, testimony, and the fourth thing, no remorse whatsoever on the part of Dylan Roof during the, because of these horrible acts that he committed. I don't think it's going to take very long on January 3rd for the jury to come back with a death penalty. You know what I thought was interesting, uh, and Brandon Clark and I both thought this, was that the judge told the jury, mm -hmm. don't watch TV, don't go on the internet right. to look at any of their posts or, or what yeah. have you to be influenced, but uh, you can't not do that. You can't not do that. There's, I mean, we're inundated by social media. We're inundated by news and information these days, but I thought the jury did a fantastic job with, uh, with, the, with their verdict and, and how difficult it had to be to not only be a member of the jury mm -hmm. to sit there, but also to be some of the family members. All the, the, the uh, our hearts go out to the family members and their incredible courage during this right. time. They, they really are an example that should be held up uh, for all the world to see. They are amazing people and it's their attitude and it's their genuine true love that really kept this community together during this time. And moving on, uh, something that really came out of nowhere was Jim Merrill's indictment. You're going to hear a lot of the, the name of Jim Merrill. You're going to hear David Pascoe. You're going to hear Attorney General Alan Wilson over the past couple of weeks. This is just a small glimpse into the way that government is run here in South Carolina, and they've got to do something about it. Mm -hmm. Governor Nikki Haley started this, uh, th this corruption investigation. She was talking about ethics and ethics probes. You remember in, in her last State of the State address, she called out lawmakers. Uh, we're going to see a lot more of this. He claims he's innocent. I, so. uh, well, it says he's innocent. And even if he did nothing to actually violate the law, we've really got to take a close look at the law here in South Carolina to see exactly what kind of arrangements and business dealings that we can allow our lawmakers to be a part of because this thing stinks to high heaven. 20 seconds, 526. Maybe, <laughs> maybe we might get it. Uh, they, they're pushing it down the road. Uh, maybe in March, the SIB is going to come back. I love the, then when Senator Sandy Sin showed up at the meeting with an old 526 sign, it was fantastic. But we're kicking the can down the road, the road again. Maybe we'll get started on 520. Fingers crossed. Fingers right. crossed. Absolutely. Thanks so much, Charlie. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you, Annie. All right. Before we send it over.